hopefully this is working. Let's see. Okay. Very good. So, if you're watching this, welcome back to the dumpster fire. Um, so, um, I'll start the stream off with a little um, update bit and then um, move forward with um, uh, painting and decal stuff. So, um, so I've been taking a little bit of a break from electronics, um, just something else to do. Um, so, um, over the last, um, about two weeks, I, um, like in the spare time I've had, um, I put together the structure for the rocket, like, um, going through with all of the, um, like laser cutting and, um, Epoxying all of that stuff for um, all of the parts of the rocket. Um, so did that, um, and some and some of that stuff was shown in past streams. Um, so those are there if you want to check them out. They're not the greatest, sorry. Um, and I'll if people really want, I can do a video walkthrough of the whole process. Just um, explaining everything like each little step um, uh, one of the things I um, referred to with the um, in terms of like epoxying and like um, like structural assembly I referenced a video um, by uh, Zyla Foxlin she's got a really good video of her um, putting together a L2 capable rocket and did a really, really good job with that. She did all of the epoxy stuff. She shows the whole process for the exterior fin fillets. So that's a really good reference if you want to check that out. I couldn't quite record that because as soon as I was basically getting ready to actually start the fillet process, that's when the camera died for uh, recording, so didn't get that unfortunately, but got some of the taping stuff beforehand, uh, got that, and then did the exterior fillets, cleaned that stuff off, then uh, sanded everything down, uh, tried to get the body tube and the fins and everything to be as smooth as can be, along with the fillets, so then everything is all nice and smooth, but also rough enough to where uh, eventually paint could, or really primer for the first bit, um, to grip onto the rocket body surface and um, so make it so I can look, er, bleh, make it look pretty. So went through, sanded that down, and um, I have some pictures I will share really quick. Let me uh, let's see if I can make sure I have the right thing. Um, let's see. Let's see. Come on, computer, do the thing. Okay. So then, enter that, so you can see, let me go. All right, so here is the rocket, um, or basically pre-paint everything. So this is all the raw um, parts, all, all the structural stuff in here being done. So there's internal um, epoxying for different stuff. Um, you've got, um, so started off with a uh, black nose cone right here, uh, three inch diameter by either 12 by 12 and a half inch length ogive or ogive um, curve uh, nose cone. So that's there. And if you look, um, let's see if I can 
let me move over. All right, it's not wanting to let me, there we go. So if you see how um, it looks all weird on this surface, the reason why is because originally the whole nose cone was, um, since it, it's since it's a plastic cast part, the surface is kind of rough. It had like little ridges and um, whatnot all across the surface, which um, weren't quite what I wanted for the look of my rocket. Um, other nose cones, they're typically a lot smoother, but these ones, they weren't. Um, so what I did is I basically just went through and sanded this down a ton with a, um, with a polishing wheel that we have at the UAH machine shop. Um, did that, so just kind of buffed it through. Um, so it looks all weird, kind of textured there, but really that surface is like super, super smooth. And then went over it with sandpaper um, to kind of rough it up enough for the um, eventual paint and primer stuff to grip to it. Um, and then we have the body tubes um, here. This top one right here, nothing too fancy here really, basically um, just have some lines drawn on for um, uh, just like for indexing everything, making sure everything is all lined up. And um, did that, there's the coupler section in here, which has, um, so if you see this one part right here, how it seems like the, um, how it's, you've got this cut right here. Reason why is because I have one part of this section being uh, removable so you can access the electronics on the inside and I'll show that um, in a little bit and then got uh, this body tube so this is where all the magic happened with um, putting in the motor tube which goes to around here or well yeah so the motor tube going from the aft end to somewhere around here ish um, so there's three centering rings on the inside, one way up here, and then one on um, the leading and trailing edges of the internal fin tabs, which are parts of these um, laser cut wood fins, which actually go and insert into the, uh, insert through this, um, the outer surface of the body tube, and go and mate with the surface of the motor tube on the inside. And that's all just loaded with epoxy all on the inside. Um, and then have the fillets all in um, these edges here. Um, went through, sanded everything down, um, cleaned it. Um, so all of this is a little bit of just kind of dust from cleaning stuff. Um, so went through, did that. Um, so then um, after this, um, so I went and sanded the body tube, also or the whole body tube section as well, so that. Um, like not, not too much, but just enough where the paint and primer would eventually mix, or not, not mix, grab onto the body tube well. Um, and then I was going to record the painting process, but it was too messy to try to do that. So what I have instead, I have pictures of the different stages of the process. Um, let me check really quick, make sure the stream is actually working. Okay. Um, so I got that and then a picture of me next to the thing. So uh, what I did first was um, I started to tape off some certain sections of the overall rocket assembly before painting. So I'll start at the top. So this is the upper body tube. Nothing too fancy there. Basically just sanded everything. Um, the nose cone right here, what I did was um, I want to keep this top part right here to be white. I, or I was going to paint this and then right where um, I've got, so I've got some tape right here. Um, this is basically right at the start of the um, shoulder from the nose cone. So nose cone and then there's that little um, uh, drop in circum or drop in diameter. And then this part, basically right here, is what goes inside the upper body tube. So I wanted to tape that off so that this wouldn't get painted on at all and change anything with like the thickness um, between, or like the thickness of, or the clearance between the 
nose cone, shoulder, and the boat, the body tube, so that then I can manually change that later rather than trying to go and mess with paint. So I have that cleared off there. Um, next, um, so on this body, the lower body tube right here with the fins and everything, uh, what I did was, so the two uh, rail buttons on the uh, on the body tube, I went and covered those up just with masking tape, just took them, wrapped them around, nothing too fancy, just so that when painting them they wouldn't get covered in paint, and keep them nice and clean. And then, yeah, so next I did the coupler section right here. So what I did here is, um, so we've got this band right here, and I have little holes right here. That's to let um, uh, ambient air pressure um, equalize with the um, internal air pressure inside the coupler for the barometric pressure sensor inside so that you can actually detect altitude as you get the rocket up higher, um, but that's a separate thing. So if you see here, um, kind of, so kind of similar to the uh, to the bit with the nose cone, how I had the uh, inserting part uh, taped off. What I did is I did the same thing, so I covered um, uh, on both sides, since both sides of the coupler end up getting uh, put into body tubes, I taped those off with masking tape so that when painting they won't get too much. But if you see, I actually intentionally left a little bit of a gap right here. So the reason I have that gap is, um, so obviously when you have um, the coupler and you put it into the any of the body tubes, there's always going to be that tiny little bit of gap in between uh, the band and the body tube. There's just a little, little bit. Um, like no matter how good a cutting you are, you're always going to see some line there. So what I did is I left just a little bit of space there so that... Um, when I'm painting this, that color will actually go and transfer also to that little bit of the brown uh, coupler tube inside there so that um, if there's any amount of gap between the band and the body tube adjacent to it, um, the color will at least try to look continuous going across that transition so that um, basically whatever color this is and the motor tube right here is, this will be that same color so then you won't get like this weird like you won't see any remnants of like this weird brown in here um, so let's see so did that and you might be wondering why I have paper towels here um, wrapped on the stuff so what I did is um, so one way that you can mask off certain parts of uh, the rocket while you're painting them is to use a little bit of paper towels, just kind of roll them around in different areas to basically, um, it'll act just like masking tape. It'll just keep paint from getting where you don't want it to be. Uh, but it, it comes with the benefit that you don't have to wrap the whole thing in tape. It's just, you get a little bit at the base just to hold that paper towel on, and that's all you need. So, so that is um, what those are there. Um, so once that started, or, or once all the taping was done, uh, next was time to start painting. So um, the process with um, painting, uh, I'll get into the coloring schemes um, later, but I actually made a change from having a mostly black rocket. I'm now having a mostly white rocket with some amount of black still there also. So what I did was I started with, um, actually, let me grab it really quick. I've got some, so what I did was, um, so I just used, um, uh, cans of um, Rust-Oleum spray paint, which uh, the specific kind I got is paint and primer, so you don't need to get a whole can of primer, use that up, and then get a whole can of um, just paint, you can just get a mix. Um, since that's, I just need this little bit uh, for this rocket, so 
Um, so got that. Or, so started with the white base right here. This is Rust-Oleum. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, white uh, paint and primer with um, gloss. Um, so got that. Painted everything that you see here um, just as the base coat, um, just that bit of primer. So um, we've got the lower body tube right here, um, the upper body tube uh, right next to it, and just got those, covered them with spray paint. Um, got the different coupler sections um, or coupler parts um, painted. Uh, so there's the, let's see, if I zoom in here, we have the original coupler with part of the tube or or part of the band uh, permanently fixed on it. It's just glued on um, right there. And then that little removable band is right there. Um, so you got that painted. And then also the nose cone, which is up here because um, I couldn't find a good place to keep it. It was a little breezy and I didn't want the thing to get blown over. Um, since I was doing this basically, uh, this is just outside of the parking lot for the, at, at the back of the machine shop where I was working on um, paint at the time. But there just happened to be this tire with a pole in it that um, was good enough so that I could um, uh, set the nose cone on top of it and just let it sit and dry there for a little bit. Um, so I did that. I did a few coats, um, just being sure to um, take the can, go side to side, uh, down the length of the rocket. Um, if you want a uh, description or a like a more in detail um, look at painting a rocket, there is. So this guy, John Coker, um, he's another good um, uh, guy on YouTube with um, uh, painting uh, rock. Or, well, he's got a bunch of stuff for a whole bunch of rocketry stuff. He's got um, some good info. But um, uh, this video right here, simple painting right here, um, he goes through the whole process, um, uh, different techniques for stuff, um, uh, stuff for masking, um, different areas and painting everything. Um, so if you want, um, definitely check out, um, his video here. Um, and I'll link this specific video in the description, um, of the stream in a little bit. Or actually, I could actually do that right now since, let's see. Now you guys have that link if you really want it. Um, so you got that, and then um, yeah. Let's see. So we have that. All right. So covered everything in uh, the white paint and primer first. Um, did a few coats of that. Um, after I got that done, uh, next thing to do was to. Um, start applying some other black, or start applying some black paint. Um, started everything, yeah, started everything with white, and the way you wanna paint your rocket, or and pretty much anything spray painting at all if you're doing multiple colors, is to go from your lightest colors, and then, or, yeah, so start with your lightest colors, and then transition to your darkest colors. The reason why is, um, because if you're trying to paint over a light color, it's really easy to do with a dark color. But if you're trying to go the other way around and cover a dark color with a light color, so say I had this whole rocket started with black, and I was trying to paint it white, it's gonna take a lot of coat, or it's gonna take a lot more coats to cover it and get it white than it would be um, the other way around. So started with white and um, I'll get into the design for why the um, t 
tape is how it is right here, but basically um, what it is is that um, you can use the masking after you have um, your white paint cure enough. Um, you cover up with paint and then you um, spray with um, your secondary color on top of that and then anything underneath all the masking tape and paper towels um, like what I have right here I've got um, some tape um, going up to some paper towel right here to cover basically from here to here and then there's some stuff right here going along here and then a similar thing on this body tube there's um, some tape and um, paper towel stuff here but um, I'll explain the color with that um, uh, so once you have um, everything all masked off you can go and tape it um, here's a updated picture with some of the parts um, after they've been spray painted with some black um, so it's really really shiny and the epoxy on this aft end is not pretty so that's why it kind of looks all lumpy bumpy it's not because it's just a whole bunch of paint all just pooled up in there that's the epoxy that was all pooled up in there and dried like that so it's not very clean but it's the back end of the rocket ideally you're not going to be looking at it that much anyway um, but then the rest of the rocket um, you know it's all black um, or it's covered in black with stuff and then the um, yeah, so any of the exposed area that I wanted painted black is now covered in black and then uh, what I can do is um, peel the tape off later on um, or after this cures um, and then I'll be left with white underneath everywhere where the masking tape was at and then black um, everywhere that was left exposed. Um, so I've got basically black here, here, and here. Uh, and then uh, one thing is, um, one thing to keep in mind when painting is sometimes you're going to get um, little bits of drip. Um, when I was painting the back end, um, there was um, a little bit of drip over in a few areas um, so you'll want to um, when you have drips like this you're gonna want to take them and sand them down so that everything is all eventually nice and smooth if your color looks discontinuous that's fine because after you go and sand everything down all smooth you can just go over it with another coat of paint and then an, all the color will be um, exactly how you want it to be um, yeah, so I'll explain the design here in a sec, but um, so after sanding, uh, repainting, um, doing a few coats of everything, and then removing the uh, masking tape at the end of everything, ended up with this. So um, this is the whole stack of um, all of the parts all together, all painted, um, all the masking tape peeled off. Uh, basically everything that's left right here in terms of cosmetics that needs to be done is the decals which that's what I'm going to be working on tonight um, and also bonus points if you can tell what this blanket is of um, if you do um, you have excellent taste in music um, so there's that so I'll talk a little bit about the design of the rocket that I'm going for um, so why the paint looks like it is. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna switch over to AutoCAD and give just a quick um, explanation for the design. So what I have here is, um, let me make sure you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, yeah. Um, Let me move this back really quick. So what I did is in AutoCAD, I was able to uh, generate a quick layout just for where I want all my paint to be. Um, so what I did is I basically just drew in, um, yeah, just drew line work um, to cover basically the general geometry of the rocket. So. Um, I have one section from here to here that is 33 inches. That's the length of um, the upper body tube. There's a one inch band right here. Um, there's the 34 inch body tube going down here and the rest of the stuff. Um, what I then did is if I, let me, let's, let's 
Let me try and just select like a single line really quick. So what I did is I basically set up a grid that I can um, fill in with whatever shapes I want. Um, so I have all these lines, so I can have everything all set up into quarters, basically. Um, this um, base, oops. What this basically is right here, each configuration, so the top configuration right here is for a level one flight. Um, the uh, lower one is for L2. So this is Tigris, this is Tigris Sigma right here. So what I have is, um, this is basically, if you were to take this profile and wrap it all the way around the rocket, um, you would get the look that um, I have. So uh, you can see, um, oops, let me try to zoom right. I'm on the trackpad right now. I don't want to wire up my mouse. Um, so I have um, these little rectangles right here. These are where um, each of the fins are on the rocket. If you see these two on the outside, those are half the size. That's because that's basically a seam like cutting down um, like halfway through each fin. So you have a little bit on one side and one on the other. Um, so that's just wrapped around. So in total, there are four fins going all around since this is like um, basically where this edge all right here is and where this edge right here, those would be touching if this were to be wrapped around your rocket. Um, so there's different areas that have um, uh, black, white, gray, and red. Um, so anything that's black is anywhere that would be painted um, black, obviously. And then white, believe it or not, is where white paint would be. Um, so what I have down here at the bottom is um, I have a... Um, so I basically have the whole fin section all in here and where the motor is, that'll all be black. The reason why is because um, when this thing is actually coming back down from flight, um, the, the fin section is going to be what hits the ground first. That's what's going to take that initial impact, um, get possibly like dug into the dirt a little bit. Um, uh, it's it's going to get dirty, might get scratched up. So. Um, trying to keep like a purely white rocket or something, you don't want that um, because it's going to really easily get dirty. Um, like if you're wanting to preserve the rocket, which you should, um, but um, so I want to keep, I want to take care of this thing because I want to fly it uh, definitely more than once and in multiple configurations. So um, the back end is going to be um, all black basically. So all black fins, um, this whole section. This section right here, um, this is actually, um, I'm taking um, sectors or quadrants of the, um, uh, of the body tube, painting them black and white, kind of similar to the roll pattern on a lot of other rockets. So for example, let's look at the Saturn V. Everybody knows that rocket. Um, we look at the Saturn V. Um, so if you look at the rocket, um, let me, yeah. So if you see on um, different areas, you have these kind of sections that are, um, you've got black, white, black, and that goes and wraps around the whole way. And same in different areas around here. Um, so the purpose for those is um, when the rocket is actually going up, it will, or say this is your rocket. Um, so as the rocket is going up, there's probably going to be some amount of roll. If you have a camera watching the rocket as it goes up, you can use those um, those black and white lines as a reference so that you can see how fast it's twirling around, um, which can give you your um, roll rate. Um, so I have a roll pattern kind of right here. Um, and then white, and then just a black band right here, just just for looks. Um, that and um, in this section, and then similarly at the top section right here, I actually have holes cut into the body tube to make room for um, the view of 
the internal cameras that'll be inside of the electronics unit. So uh, just to keep everything look nice and um, not have any just weird holes showing up in the white, I have that whole band just black so that um, when you first look at it, it's like, oh, cool, it's a little just, it looks like a simple black band, but really you have some little holes in different areas um, for the cameras. So just trying to sneak those, or trying to sneak those in there. And then the upper body tube, um, this whole section right here, very similar. So all white and then black up at the top. Also for the cameras, if um, if you want anything up here, um, and just trying to make it look good. Um, and then uh, this upper one right here, same exact thing. So just lower body tube and then nose cone right here. So next what you might be wondering is what are these gray rectangles? What are these gray bands are here? And what's the red right here? So those are actually just the general locations of some decals that I designed and I'm gonna be putting on the rocket. So what I'm gonna have is I'm gonna have basically the name of each section of the rocket, um, uh, have titles go up kind of like um, the electron rocket a little bit or kind of like how you have like the USA on um, this rocket or you've got United States on this area or if we look up um, let's see electron oops, electron rocket um, let's see if we have a good picture yeah so you see how you have your text kind of going vertically up and saying like what the name of the rocket is. That's uh, one, that's one of the things I'm going for. Originally, um, the design of the rocket I was going for was um, it was going to be a mostly black rocket and having my own custom decals to look kind of similar to Electron a little bit, except with my own flair. Um, so. I uh, was going for that and then ran into an issue with the decals and I'll get that I'll get to that in a little bit but basically um, uh, that led to me deciding um, to do a white base rocket rather than a black base but um, still wanted to get some amount of black in there so this is what it looks like now um, so these rectangles um, let's see um, these let's see so these let's see So those rectangles and those rectangles um, are going to say the name of the different sections. So um, the two lower ones that are on the afts on the yeah. So on the lower um, bit, those are going to say Tigris. These ones right here are going to let's see. Let's, these will say uh, Sigma on them. Um, these smaller rectangles here, those are going to have the little Seder Aerospace Shield logo. Um, these bands going across them are going to say, um, one of them says like Seder Aerospace, one of them says like Tigris Base Unit, one of them says Sigma Extension Unit, um, and then these right here, these are like Eden Avionics labels, um, uh, Electrical Access Panel, um, and then the little red rectangles right here, that represents um, that's where I'm going to put like a little US flag decal. Um, so those decals, they all look like this basically. So this is just made in Microsoft Word. Um, you can use whatever program you want. You can use Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever, um, Inkscape or something. Um, these I was able to just make in uh, Word, uh, just really quick and easy. And so this is on just a 11 by or eight and a half by 11 size piece of paper. Um, we've got some decals right here. So those would say Tigris right here. Um, I have two so, since I'll have one on each side basically. Um, let's see. Um, I got that. I've got Sigma. I've got these bands right here that'll go and wrap around. Um, then some shields, um, some flags. And then uh, some other labels right here, which um, those ones aren't gonna be too critical. These are more just kind of extra stuff just to kind of help with indexing. So I've got some right here that will be um, just noting um, 
where the x, y, um, x and y axes are on the rocket. So those can be labeled there. Um, some different identifying stuff here. Some more x, y labels, just a little bit bigger. Those can go on the fins. Um, and then some other things right here, which um, these I can use for marking where my centering rings are at in case I need anything. And then these labels right here, um, these are going to be my markers for where my center of gravity and center of pressure are going to be on the rocket. Um, <coughs> uh, let's see. So those will um, be there. I'm going to save the marking for these until basically the very, very end of the process until, or like at that point, I'll know the absolute mass of everything, where everything will be organized so I can properly um, place them. And then, um, yeah, and then center of pressure should be pretty much the same as whatever my open rocket simulation has. Um, so I have those. And so the way that I actually made the decals is you can get um, uh, printable sticker paper. Um, if I, let me grab some right here. So what you can do is um, you can get this stuff at pretty much any um, any any local store that sells paper, basically. Um, so. Um, or any craft store will also have it. Um, so the what I went, I, I just went to Michael's and got a pack of um, like eight sheets of transparent uh, sticker paper. And what it is is basically it's um, just a giant clear sticker sheet that you can put in your printer, print and it'll be design you want on the, um, on that clear sticker sheet, which then you can um, go and cut out and um, put where put what uh, put on whatever it is that you're making so what i did is basically um so this is a test print of um this is just a yeah just a color test print with um the printer i was using um printed out the initial design here made sure the ink and color looked good and everything and um, made sure I got the right orientation of um, the sticker sheet in the printer. So I make sure I print on the actual like sticker side instead of the sticker backing side. Um, so got that, printed them, and I started cutting some of them out. Um, so then I have, um, let's see. I've got like one of them right here. This one says Tigris right here. Um, and then I've got, I've, I've got the rest of the others all in a pile right here next to me. And I'm gonna be putting those on tonight. Um, got that. So the reason, or so I'll get into the issue with the colors now since I'm talking about the decals. Um, so the decals I had here, originally I was going for, um, so I have transparent sticker paper. And I, um, I had this had these um, decals designed and um, printed them. And the problem with the type of printer I was using is that um, you can print um, these graphics on them and they look excellent on a white backing. But the issue is, um, since it's transparent, everything on here is also transparent to some extent also. Um, like with the way that I have my stuff set up. And um, when trying to put these onto a black surface, um, it, it's basically invisible. You can't actually see anything, which is unfortunate. Um, I, don't th I don't think that's the case with all sticker sheets, um, but that's just with the stuff that I have, that's just how it happened. Um, and so... Uh, that prompted the redesign from a black rocket, which would have looked similar to um, the Electron rocket with, um, like you see like it's all black and you have these cool um, like silver decals. Um, let's see. Uh, where's the picture I was looking for? I think, or, yeah, 
so like you let's see so you got these cool like um like gray silver decals all around it, it, it looks that is a sexy looking rocket um but fortunately for me i can't make that look at least not on this rocket so or um yeah so what I did instead is redesign to incorporate more white on the rocket design. So that's what all of the white stuff is. So anywhere that there is white is um, good for sticker stuff. So I've got that, and then I wanted, to, I still wanted to keep black because I'm one of those people that loves black as everything. Um, so uh, yeah, so so yeah, so got some black in there, got some white and then uh, good places for the stickers. Um, so that's all that there. So, oops. Um, so we got that. So now um, what I'm gonna start to do is, um, uh, yeah, so now I'm gonna go over the sticker application process. So um, it's nothing too fancy, but um, it's it's some it's something I need to do and a lot less messy and so I can um, show that and so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna readjust cameras really quick um, set up right next to me so that I can get a higher and better view of um, like the little workspace and um, yeah and bring or, oh actually what I will do um, like right after that. I'm gonna show the whole rocket all stacked up um, with all the paint. So uh, let me, uh, I'll be right back really quick. Let me um, do some stuff. Alrighty, cool. 
So, uh, got cameras moved, and now let me show you the rocket. Too stupidly big. So we got one tube there. We've got a coupler section there, and then we have and then we have that. So let me see if I can. Let me see if I can move the camera just a bit. Okay. So I did one decal um, just really quick um, earlier. So if I can get it correctly in the view without hitting the camera. Um, so so this is printed on that transparent um, uh, sticker paper. Um, so when it goes and gets put onto a white backing like this, you can barely even tell the difference. Um, and then you get the nice custom printed um, lettering there. So I've got that. And then I've got a crap ton of other stickers to put on. So. Um, yeah, so I've got uh, Tigris right now, and um, let's see. So I've got that one there. Um, actually, let me. Uh, let's see. All right, yeah. So. I'm gonna get the other Tigris um, sticker put on uh, this other part right here. And then I'll get the Sigma, um, I'll get the other bands and just kind of go through it. Um, so let's put this there. Let's just put that down for right now. Um, I'm also gonna get some music started because, uh, yeah. Let me, or let me, let me try and move some things around. So, yeah, let's get, let's just, I'm going to play it directly from here so that the audio quality is actually somewhat better than um, just listening it, listening to it play on a speaker from here and then getting picked up by the microphone. Um, so, yeah. So we'll do that and then. So currently, how the camera is being mounted um, or fixed in place is that it is actually, um, let's see, 
it is a combination of being taped to um, taped to the wall slash a cardboard box. Um, because I don't have an actual stand. Um, oh great, that's One little thing really quick. Put this shelf back. There's one little part where some white bled where it shouldn't have. Or the or the other way around where um there's some white that uh, didn't get covered, so I'm just filling in a little, um, a little white spot with some black sharpie really quick, because that's just quick and easy. And then I'm gonna prop the camera back up slightly with the sharpie so that it doesn't. I swear, this was fine, like, just a few minutes ago. Okay. I think that's good enough for right now. So... One thing I'm doing is using just a little bit of paper towel just to um, keep from any scraping on the black. Um, on the white, it's not that bad if I add a little bit of a scrape because the surface underneath it is just white cardboard body tube. But with the black, if I scratch any too deep at all, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to skip this song because I don't feel like having dementia right now. Um, uh, let's see, but yeah, but if I scratch any on the black at all, then it would start to reveal the white surface underneath that, and I don't want any weird white scrapes in the black, so I'm using just a little bit of paper towel to keep from any uh, potential scrapes um, when rolling on the little um, stands that I have here. Um, so I've got... Um, so this sticker is already done. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is the other side. See if I can grab the sticker out from the pile. So this sticker is gonna go just like this. Let me actually pull up the action. Let's see. I'm going to minimize my view really quick. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm going to do that a little bit and then pull up the AutoCAD. So here I can see the exact positions of everything. Um, so I believe it's a half inch from the leading part of that sticker to oops. I'm gonna go from right there to there, 0.5, yeah. 
So I've got grab my I've got a scale right here. Um, and I'm just so one thing that's nice about using a scale like one of these. Unfortunately, this is an architect scale, um, but it's the one that I've got and it's good enough for me. It's got inches and yeah. So one thing that's nice about uh, some of these is that you can do measurements on these and um, when you have them lined up on your surface, they'll naturally want to kind of stay um, uh, lined up with your body tube since they have that triangular section